Fitzgerald Kennedy do solemnly swear. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. That you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Well, it was a kind of fluke, but my uh, editor, one of the great old unreconstructed marine type, you know, editors, Sid Epstein, hired me from Detroit. And the system at the, at the Star was always to just have everybody work on the dictation bank and take dictation. Carl Bernstein took my dicta dictation, for example. And so everybody was sort of saying, who is this girl who's coming in? And he was giving me all the best assignments because he wanted to look good. He had gone out on a limb to change the whole system. So there I was, six months after coming into town, knowing very little about Washington. And uh, I got this assignment. And I remember asking one of the older reporters, I said, is this different than when Eisenhower was here? And he just broke up and said, oh, my God. He said, you know, here were the, ca the Camelot, the Kennedys, the kids, the whole uh, joie de vivre of a whole new in, in, uh, administration. And, of course, I had not been there to see what had been there before. <laughs> I missed. I came late for a press conference that the Rat Pack was giving. There was uh, Joey Bishop, Bishop, Frank Sinatra, um, Pat uh, Lawford, uh, Peter Lawford, who was married to Pat uh, Kennedy. Anyway, um, and so I got off the floor at the Shoreham at the top floor of the penthouse, and there were these two guards standing there, and I said, you know, very authoritatively, I've come for the press conference. They said, the press conference is over. And I said, well, I'm, I'm coming. And they said, hey, Frank, there's some kid out here who wants your autograph. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. I was five, two and a half, standing up as high as I could and said, I'm with the Washington Star, <laughs> and trying to act very important. So they ushered me in, and they all sat there. And I just knew when I left that I, it was going to be a total scene of, of humor because they, they were being obsequious, overly obsequious, and, oh, what would you like to know, and this and that, and kind of half smirking at this kid who came in to do the story, and I felt really kind of dumb about that, but that was the first thing, and then, of course, I covered the inaugural, and I covered the uh, party, the big inaugural party that they had the night before. It was freezing cold, and actually the night of the inaugural party, it snowed, I think it was a record snowstorm of just way up high, and people were coming in, and as I said, these were the swells who paid $100, because it was 1961, <laughs> you know, $100 is nothing today, but in those days that was something. And, all and so the next day, they had been spending all night packing down the snow, so that um, I walked from my apartment to Pennsylvania Avenue, and it was just one solid block of padded down snow, because they had all these horses and everything else under the sun, bands and everybody coming by, and it was just, it was boring. It took forever for this all to happen. And all you could do is we were sitting on the stand across and looking over, and you could see them talking, but you had no idea what they were saying or gesturing. You know, there was not that television seeing everything kind of moment at that time. In fact, we were writing with our papers and pencils, you know, this is unheard of today, cell phone and everything else, but with our gloves on, and then, um, and you could see puffs of smoke coming out whenever he spoke, and when they had Robert Frost sp speaking, and then we all jumped down, I and several of us jumped down onto the, off the platform, and, they, and once again, I got the Secret Service saying, hey, kid, you know, <laughs> they treated you like you were nothing, um, and you were, <laughs> in a way. But he said, just stay here, you know, don't move. And we had to wait until the whole crowd left on the other side before we could go and write a story. And of course, there were no cell phones. You had to go to a pay phone somewhere to phone it in or race back to the office. The deadline situation was a lot different. Times have changed so much with the inauguration uh, becoming such an amazing tour de force of gajillion cameras and uh, you know, this was just bleachers. It was just bleachers on one side of Pennsylvania and then the swearing in on the other side. And you know, it was a moment of high glamour for Washington. It really was.